My name is Johanna Martens. I've been in Australia for four years um, to conduct my PhD. And I'm doing that at Deakin University in Geelong at the Center of Integrative Ecology. I work here under supervision of Andy Bennett and Matthew Berg and also with external supervisors from Zeus Victoria and Charles Sturt University. And for my field research, I've been lucky enough to work with some great people, mainly with Helena Stokes and Raoul Ribot. I've always been very interested in animal conservation, especially the conservation of birds. I like birds a lot and particularly parrots. I used to work in, with introduced parrots in Germany. And yeah, I just find them fascinating. And for me, that's one way to help parrots um, by finding out more about the, and a pathogen that severely affects them negatively. For me, it's important to do applied science. I really like to see that my research has some sort of impact and a direct application that can, for example, help conservation management, species recovery programs, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm working on beacon feather disease virus, or BFTV in short. That virus is thought to be able to infect most or maybe all species of parrots and cockatoos worldwide, which is a particular problem as that is one of the largest groups of birds with almost 400 species worldwide. And it's also one of the most threatened bird groups worldwide, with about 30% of the species being considered as threatened, um, so threatened by extinction. So a disease or pathogen can potentially cause a lot of damage in that bird group. The problem with this virus is it doesn't only affect one species, but it is able to affect many host species because it is very small, it can mutate very quickly, so it can adapt very well to new hosts. It's in previous years uh, increasingly been found in non-parrot species as well, so it's showing the potential to infect all sorts of bird species. It's just a matter of looking for it. And depending on the bird species it infects, it can cause severe disease called um, citizen beak and feather disease and it can be lethal for some species and individuals. The signs of disease are very different depending on the bird species, but generally birds start losing their feathers more and more with each molt, with each change of feathers, um, until some of them become naked. Their beak starts to deform, so do their claws. In early stage, they sometimes just look a bit dirty, then the feathers fall out and they look bloody, especially the bases of the feathers. And they also become immunosuppressed, so their immune system fails, which makes them more vulnerable to other diseases. Because of the feather loss, they could um, die due to exposure um, in cold or hot weather. Because of the deformed beak, some of them starve to death. So there are lots of different signs internally, some of the tissue gets damaged and dies off, so it can be very severe and very brutal. The severity of the signs of disease depends very much on the parrot species that's affected. My main study species, the crimson rosella, hardly shows any signs of disease, um, but has a very high prevalence of the virus. Young birds are mainly affected, and in those young birds that are younger than one year, I found a prevalence of about 80%. So a lot of the birds who carry the virus, they're infected with the virus, but they don't show those severe signs that we see in sulfur crested cockatoos, for example. The virus probably originates here in Australasia. It's thought to have been evolved here in post gondwanan times, so it's been a lot around for a very long time. The host species here, the parrot species here, may have co-evolved with it but it's since then been spread around the world. It now has a global distribution in wild parrots, but also in captive parrots, so pets. Um, so, and it has been distributed with the legal and illegal pet trade. For example, when wild budgerigars were exported to other countries as pets, that's how the, the virus got spread around the world. Most studies on BFDV so far are focusing on clinical aspects, on molecular aspects of the virus, the genetics, and they are often done with very few birds in captivity or with dead birds or birds that have been brought into vet care because they were sick. But there's not much known about the ecology of the virus in wild populations of parrots. 
So my main objective to find out more about the virus and the transmission dynamics in wild birds in this area in Australia here in Victoria. So I first trapped my main study species crimson rosellas and my other study species, various species of parrots and cockatoos with various methods. So crimson rosellas and eastern rosellas I trapped during the breeding season in nest boxes while they were provisioning nestlings and I also took the nestlings out of the nest boxes and took samples from them. And year round I trapped the other species in walk-in traps, cage traps and, and nets, mist nets. We then we trap the birds and we take samples, so blood samples, swab samples, uh, feather samples. Um, we then freeze those samples and take them to the lab. And once we have enough um, to work with, we extract the DNA from those samples. That's the mixture, mixture of all DNA on that sample. So parrot DNA and virus DNA and whatever may also live in that parrot. I then have a specific assay that um, targets the DNA of that virus so I can screen my DNA samples for presence of the virus. And that assay doesn't only tell me whether the virus is present, but also how much virus um, is in that sample. So I get an idea of how severely infected the birds are, the viral load in the blood. And we are hearing some crimson rosellas in the background. They want to join the interview. Um, I also use the DNA samples to sex the birds, so I know whether they are male or female, because I want to look at whether there are any differences in prevalence of viral load between males and females. And we also had another essay where we looked at antigen and feathers, which means we don't, we don't only have information about um, the prevalence of viral DNA in blood, for example, but we also know whether the birds are excreting viable infectious virus, whole virus particles into their feathers, which is um, an estimate of shedding, which is important for transmission. So we can tell carrier birds apart from shedding birds that may transmit the virus. For me, what I'm doing, that's just a really tiny, tiny pixel in the big puzzle of ecology and I think all my colleagues are doing a fantastic job but I also think that every human being should try and contribute to conservation because otherwise it's just not doable. In parrots for example diseases and pathogen pose one of the threats but the major and main threats are actually habitat destruction and poaching for the pet trade and these things need to be stopped and mitigated. We are losing our biodiversity and our species at an unprecedented rate at the moment and a lot of people don't realize that we can't exist without these animals. We are part of the system. We can't understand the consequences fully of taking species out of these systems and we are not decoupled from our environment. I feel like in the case of a lot of people, they are so detached from the natural environment, they don't realize that we can't exist without the animals and plants around us, without the insects that pollinate our plants, that grow our food. And I feel like if we don't wake up soon, it's gonna be a bit late. Yeah.